basically the whole reason to have a vertex form is for graphing because the vertex or the intercept form of a quadratic equation makes graphing dead easy. You just need to know the, the standard format for it so that you can see where the pieces fit in. The standard vertex format here, y minus k equals x minus h squared, tells us just by glancing what the vertex is. The vertex of a uh, quadratic function in this format, vertex, is hk, h comma k. So the x value and the y value. And the x value is whatever number is subtracted from x, and the y value is whatever number is subtracted from y. So if we look at our example, y plus 1 equals x plus 3 squared, our h then, if it's something that's subtracted from x, it must be a negative 3, so it would come out positive. So our h is negative 3, and our k is negative 1, which means the vertex here is negative 3, negative 1, or right there. So now we already know where the turnaround point or the vertex is. We just need to find some intercepts. So let's solve for the x-intercepts, which means that y would be 0. Anytime y is 0, we're on the x-axis, because we're not going up or down at all. We're directly on the x-axis. So we set y to be 0. That means we get 0 plus 1 equals x plus 3 squared. 0 plus 1 is 1 equals x plus 3 squared. So now we can just take the square root of both sides. Take the square root of both sides, we get 1. And that's equal to positive or negative x plus 3. Now since our two choices are positive x plus 3 and negative x plus 3, either way, we could divide both sides by that sign. So we really could solve x plus 3 equals positive or negative 1. Because no matter which one of these we go with individually, we could just change the sign on the other side by dividing both by that sign. So it tends to be easier to solve it that way, and we'll write it out that way then. So we get x plus 3, oops, sorry about that, x plus 3 equals 1, or we get x plus 3 equals negative 1. If we subtract 3 from both sides here, we get x equals negative 2, and here we get x equals negative 4. So we have a point here. And we have a point here. And now we already know kind of the general sort of path of our parabola here. Looks something like this. And then if we want, we could actually find where it hits over here by finding the y-intercept. The y-intercept occurs where x equals 0, because then we're not going left or right at all. So if we substitute 0 in for x, we'd get y plus 1 equals 0 plus 3 squared. Well, 3 squared is 9, so we get y plus 1 equals 9. Subtract 1 means we get y equals 8. So when x is 0, y is 8. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So there's a point up here. Looks like I was kind of pretty close on track there. Go right on up this way. And since that point is 4 points this way, 1, 2, 3 points this way, sorry, then 3 points this way, and the same height, there'll be another point, because parabolas are always mirror images. So there we got a pretty decent sketch of our parabola without a whole lot of uh, effort on our part. Vertex form is definitely the way to go if you have to do graphing.